right, you guys ready for the word today? Come on, you ready for the word? I'm excited about this word today. This is what I know every single one of us deal with burdens of some kind. We carry burdens in our life, oftentimes, that are not really ours to carry. We pick up habits and hang-ups and hurts, and we carry those burdens with us. And sometimes we pick up somebody else's hurt, somebody else's offense, somebody else's burden, and we carry that. Well, I want to talk to you about how to deal with burdens. You know, not everybody has riches, but everybody has burdens. Not everybody has good health, but everybody has burdens. Not everybody has a superstar talent, but everybody has burdens. And maybe you're carrying a financial burden or an emotional burden or a relational burden or an occupational burden. Maybe you're battling with something today, uh, which I know most of us are, but if you're not, battling any kind of burdens at all today, you're welcome to take an early lunch and just slip on out. And, uh, but the rest of us, me included, are going to find out what the Word of God says about how to handle burdens. Are you ready? Galatians chapter 6, verse number 2 says this, carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you'll fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks that there's something when they're not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then, They can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to anyone else. For each one should carry their own load. Now, I'm reading this to you, the NIV, and ordinarily I preach out of the NIV, but I grew up reading this passage of Scripture in the King James Version. And the King James Version uses uh, a different word than carry. It uses the word bear. Uh, And in verse number two, where it says, carry each other's burdens, and the King James says, bear ye one another's burdens. But then down here in verse number five, the last sentence is, for each one should carry their own load. The scripture says, bear your own load. Carry your own load. Each man must bear his own burden. So it's a little conflicting and confusing if you're not reading it carefully. You see in verse number two that we should bear each other's burdens. But then in verse five, it says, bear your own burden. So which one is it? Bear others' burdens or bear your own? Well, here's what the scripture says. The word bear in verse number two is a word called baros, which means uh, a crushing weight, bearing a burden, a crushing weight that's crushing someone. The word bear or carry in verse number five is a word portos, which means it, it refers to a soldier's backpack. So two different types of burdens. And with that in mind, I'm going to talk to you about how to handle burdens because there's three types of burdens that I want to talk to you about. One is a burden that we share, that crushing weight, a burden that we bear, a soldier's backpack, and then there's a burden that we wear. All right, here, number one, a burden to share. This is the pain of others. Everybody around us is carrying some measure of a burden, some level of a burden. In Galatians 6, 2, it says, carry each other's burdens, that crushing weight, and in this way, you'll fulfill the law of Christ. Well, what's the law of Christ? Well, according to the Old Testament, there are like over 600 laws. Then when you add all the rules and regulations from the Talmud, the good Jew had to follow at least 2,000 different laws and rules and regulations, and Jesus summed it all up into one law. He said in Galatians chapter 5 that the law can be summed up in one command. Aren't you glad he simplified 2,000 laws and commands into one. Made it simple for us. And that's love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And when you love somebody, you'll share their burdens. When you love somebody, God bless you, Gabby, that was big. That was was really big. (laughs) Well, bless you. You see, we all have burdens of some kind, but it's up to us to see those burdens and to share those burdens if we love one another. Perfect example is a couple weeks ago, Clay Wallace, director of Dallas Metro Dream Center, shared a need, shared a burden. They wanted to be able to have a new outreach truck uh, to be able to get out on the streets and do sidewalk Sunday school as this new school year began. He sent out an appeal email. I felt like we ought to step up and do a part Through all of our services, just a couple weeks ago, we raised over $26,000. That was sharing somebody's burden, right? We all participated in that. But then right after that, 
we were having a meeting with our directors and elders just a couple uh, or a week and a half ago. And I was meeting with uh, Ron Nelson and with uh, Darlene Beck and uh, our director, Steve Romerman and Travis Phipps and James Homadol and Aaron Cook and Jim Frampton and our elders and deacons decided, you know what? There's another burden that we needed to share because our Royal Rangers, our youth, and our seniors have been traveling around, transporting around in a really old beaten up van. And if we can get a van for kids in downtown Dallas, then we can get a van for our own. So we got a brand new van. Somebody ought to show me a picture. There we go. Boom. Thank you, Brian. There are all kinds of burdens. Burdens in the house, burdens outside of the house. Our job is to share those burdens, right? And when you see our directors and our elders, you can thank them for it. Now, some of the burdens that most of us carry, some of the greatest burdens, first of all, are when we go through loss. When somebody loses a loved one, they battle with grief, they battle with uh, emptiness, they battle with trying to find their identity all over again, and that's when we need to step in and help one another. We just had a funeral here just Saturday uh, for a middle-aged man, Jeffrey Scott, that lost his life, battled to cancer. And his mom and sister were, uh, were here and were talking about how much this church has meant to them during this time of loss. And I was just reminded, you know what? They have a burden, but they're not having to carry that burden alone. They've got people who are able to walk with them through this. I met a first-time guest after the first service who came up to the guest reception. And she shared with uh, some of us who were there meeting, she shared how she's just moved to this area from Alabama. she got a six-year-old son. And she said, I don't know anybody. She said, this has been so nice just having an adult conversation. <laughs> and every parent knows what I'm talking about. You know, especially moms. You know what it is just to be able to have an adult conversation. Well, that was a burden that she was carrying and just having a conversation with somebody here at church lifted that load just a little bit. We all have burdens that we're carrying. But most people won't ask for help because you hear them say things like this. Oh, I don't want to be a burden. So what do we have to do? We've got to look for those needs. We've got to look into people's eyes and see the burden and be willing to step in and help. We need to look at their countenance and to be able to see, are they downcast? Are they not as happy as they were yesterday? Is something different? Are they carrying themselves different? Are they responding different? If they're hurting, if they're burdened, then we as the body of Christ, we as the church need to step in and help share that burden. Can I get an amen? That's what we're called to do. In fact, William and Catherine Booth, the founders of the Salvation Army, founded back in like 1865 in London, their goal was to bring the gospel to the least and the lost. That was their goal. Towards the end of General Booth's life, Salvation Army was having an annual convention. They had invited him to come and speak, and he was unable to attend because of his health, so he sent a telegram. And the telegram was simply this, to the delegates of the Salvation Army, Here's the message. Others, period. Signed, General William Booth. That was the message to his people. Others. The vision for Freedom Church this year has been people. People, simply people. Why? Because people matter. All people matter. White people matter. Black people matter. Brown people matter. Old people matter. Young people matter. Married people matter. Single people matter. Children matter. Boys matter. Girls matter. Everybody matters. And it's up to us to be able to see the needs in people and to step into their lives and help share that burden. That's what we're called to do. The Christian life isn't about me. It's about we. We step into each other's lives and we help each other. Here's the second type of burden I'm going to talk to you about. A burden to bear alone. That's my responsibility because Galatians 6, 5 says, each one should carry his own load. That's a soldier's backpack. He should carry his own. Now, just recently, Andrew, are you going to help me one more time? Come on, bro. I was able to hike up Green Canyon. You grab those for me? Thank you. You got this. And then last week, did a little more hiking with Starla up in Montana, and it was pretty awesome. Here, let me have those.
That's not that heavy, is it? Sure. Hang on. Come here. Olivia, hold that for me just for a second. Can you carry that? Yeah. It's not that big of a deal, right? No. No, you got this. She's a girl. Wait, wait, that came out wrong. Uh, that was, uh, I mean, okay, there's no way getting out of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and dismiss, conclude, pray a benediction and send you out of here and hope that you'll forget that I said that. Olivia, you're amazing. I know she will. That was so dumb. Sorry. All right. God. You're finishing this. All right. Olivia. She could carry that. Yeah. So you could too, right? Sure. Okay. So you carry that, but I'm going to have you carry it like that. And I'm going to have you carry it like that. So just hang right there just for a second. Okay. I've got a backpack here. Now we're all carrying a backpack, our life backpack, right? How heavy that backpack is determines how fast you're going to go or whether you're going to finish. You can load this thing down with all kinds of stuff. You can load it down with guilt. You can load it down with shame. You can load it down with smaller things like little white lies, but still, it's going to add weight to your backpack. You can load it down with uh, envy and lust and greed. You can load it down, what'd you call that? Pizza? To bad pizza? It's still going to hurt you. You put all that in there, and what? This is going to become heavy. You're going to have to carry this because according to backpacking rules, everybody has to pack your own backpack. You got to carry your own backpack, and you've got to guard your own backpack. You got to make sure what goes in, what comes out. Like a perfect example is this last couple of weeks when I was with my brother and my, some of my kids, Aaron and Hunter, and we were hiking up Pikes Peak. My older brother walked over to me, and he picked up my backpack while we were stopping and resting, and he did like this. Then he picked his up and went, he says, oh, yeah, I messed up. I messed up. I said, what? He said, I packed too much stuff. He said, this is heavy. So he took a bunch of water that he had in his backpack, took it out, and he hid it so that we could pick it up on the way back down because it was just too heavy for him. I packed two bottles of water. I had one right here and one right here. How you doing over there? You doing good? Okay. I had one right here, one right here. And you know what I did? That was enough to get me started. But I had to trust that I was going to find more water along the way. It was impossible for me to carry all the water that I was going to need for the entire trip. That would only weigh me down and slow me down. So there had to be some faith to believe that there was going to be some water up the road. Whenever you're carrying the backpack of life, you can weigh yourself down with all kinds of stuff, all the stuff you think you're going to need, or you can take just what you need and trust that God's going to provide along the way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How are you doing over there, Andrew? It's burning. It's burning right now? Well, listen, that wasn't that big of a deal. It was just a small little brick. Just a small bit. Okay, here's the other point. It may not have been that big of a deal when we started carrying it. It's not a matter of how much it weighs. You know what the problem is? It's how long you have to carry it. You're, you're getting weak on me there. It's, it's a matter of how long you carry it. So some of us, we pick up weights like this. Give me that. Yeah, give me that. We pick up, stay right there. We pick up weights like this and we think it's not that big of a deal. Well, it's not that big of a deal for one minute. But five minutes, you start feeling it. Ten minutes, it's burning. And you start carrying that weight for hours and for days and for weeks. And pretty soon, it's going to weigh you down. It's going to destroy you. So you got to be willing to let go of the burdens. Can I get an amen? Will you do me a favor and take these back, please? I would love to. You would love to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, listen. If we were carrying our backpack, and we were hiking up that trail. And I said to Andrew, I said, hey, Andrew, my backpack's kind of heavy. Will you carry mine? Now, being a nice guy and working for me, he'd say yes. But, <laughs> but if we were following the rules of backpacking, he would say, no, man, that's your backpack. You, you packed it, you carry it. But if we came upon a hiker who was on the trail ahead of us, and they had been trapped underneath falling rocks, we would share that burden, Right? We would pick that burden up 
and get that hiker freed from underneath that rock. See, there's some burdens that we share and that there are some burdens that we bear. There's some things that I can't do for you and you can't do for me. I can't worship for you and you can't worship for me. I can't come in here on Sunday morning and say, hey God, I got this for everybody, okay? I'm gonna throw down today. (laughs) Doesn't matter what anybody else, no, no, I can't do that for you. You gotta bring your own worship. Now, I can pray for you, but I can't pray for you. Does that make sense? I can lift you up in prayer, but I can't be a prayer for you. You got to pray for yourself. I, I, can, I can't serve the Lord for you, and you can't serve the Lord for me. Sometimes we make this mistake of thinking, we've got such incredible staff here at our church that we've hired them to do the ministry for us. They're not hired to do the ministry for you. That's not what they're here for. You've got a ministry to do yourself, so they can't do ministry for you. I can't accept the Lord for you, and you can't accept the Lord for me. You've got to accept the Lord for yourself. I can't serve the Lord for you, and you can't serve the Lord for me. i got to serve him on my own. So there are certain things that are my responsibility, my burden to bear, and that's what I have to be willing to step up and do, and you've got to do the same thing. So I'm encouraging you to take a little inventory of your backpack what have you allowed to go in it? Is it weighing you down? Is it burdening you? Is it, is it heavy? Is it causing your arms to begin to burn? You don't have to carry it anymore. Unpack that thing and repack it with good things. Put God first. Put your family second. Put everything else after that. And here's the third thing. I'm going to stop with this. Musicians, come on back. There's a burden that we wear. There's one that we share. There's one that we bear. But there's one that we wear. And this is what Jesus said in Matthew 11, 28. He says, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Well, how do we get that rest? He said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, most of us don't understand what a yoke is. So let me show you a picture of a yoke. This is what a yoke looks like. It's a wooden bar that would go across the necks of two animals, oxen or cattle or even horses or mules, and then they're linked together, they're hooked together, they're yoked together, and that allows them to be able to work in tandem and to do more together than they can on their own. Now, what Jesus is saying in the scripture, come to me, everyone who's weary and burdened, heavy laden, and he said, take my yoke upon you. What does that mean? He's saying, connect yourself to me. And when you connect yourself to me, then we're going to have the benefit of being able to lean on Jesus. The truth is, he's going to pull the weight. We're going to get the rest. All we have to do is be willing to go where he goes. And he's going to pull the weight for us. He's going to be there for us. Why do we need to wear this yoke? Is because he provides the rest to the burden. He provides the peace in the midst of the storm. We just have to connect ourselves to him. If there's one word that kind of describes the culture we live in today, which I don't understand it, but it's stressed. Everybody's stressed. We have more access to more information and more technology and more benefits and more blessings than ever before, but yet we're more stressed. And unless we're willing to connect ourselves to Christ, be yoked together with him, we'll never understand the rest, the peace that he has for each and every one of us. Psalms 55, 22 says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. He says again in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast your anxiety or cast your cares, cast your burdens on him because he cares for you. See, casting your cares on the Lord, it's a lot like this. It's a lot like putting a saddle on a horse Burdens. Put it on the horse and then get on the horse and ride. Carrying your own burdens is like putting the saddle over your shoulder and climbing on the horse and ride. Well, that doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? Exactly. We wouldn't do that in the natural, but we do it in the spiritual all the time. We carry our own burdens. I don't want to burden you. 
I don't see any other way out. And we carry our own burdens. And all we're doing is getting beaten down and wore down each and every day. There's a beautiful scripture in Isaiah 53. It tells us exactly what Jesus did for every one of us. And listen to these words. Surely he took up our infirmities. Means he picked up our infirmities. He carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. Do you see him carrying the punishment that belonged to us? He's carrying it for you. The infirmities that are yours, he's carrying them for you. The iniquities and the sorrows, he's carrying them for you. It says, and by his wounds we are healed, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus is carrying your backpack. Jesus is carrying your burdens. Jesus carried them to the cross, and he's still carrying them today. But yet we choose to pick them up and say, no, I can handle it myself. I can do it on my own. I got this thing. I don't need anybody's help. I don't need God's help. I don't need the church's help. I don't need my mother and my father's help. I can do this on my own. And all it's doing is causing you to be more stressed out. Jesus says, come to me. Give me those burdens. I I already began to pick them up at the cross, and I'll still carry them today. There's not one person here in this room today that needs to carry a burden one minute longer. You see, you're sitting here thinking, I got these bricks, I can handle them. But the longer you hold them, the more it's gonna burn, the more pain you're gonna feel. Give it to Jesus. Just turn it over to Jesus. Give it to him. He wants to carry your burdens today. Would you do me a favor and stand to your feet all over this place? In just a moment, as our worship team begins to sing this song out, I'm going to ask you from all over this place, from the front, the back, left, to the right, everybody listening to me right now, who walked into this place, and what I'm saying to you today has resonated in your heart. You recognize you've been carrying a burden that Jesus has already promised you he would carry. You've been carrying a weight that he's already told you, I'll carry for you. You're carrying a problem. You're carrying a situation, a scenario on your your shoulders that Jesus said, just give it to me. I'll take that weight off of your shoulders. I'll give you rest. Some of you are so stressed out, freaked out, messed up, perplexed, confused, can't see which way to go. Jesus is saying, just give it to me. Just give me that burden. So as we begin to sing this out all over this place, I'm going to ask you to do this. And you don't have to stay here the whole time if you don't want, but I'm asking you to come to this altar to lay that burden down. Just symbolically say, Lord, I'm giving you this stress. It, the stress I can't handle at work, the stress I can't handle with my family, the stress I can't handle in my marriage, the stress I can't handle with my kids, the stress I can't handle because the doctor's report, the stress I can't handle because of all the stuff that I've, the shame, the guilt, the worry, the fear, the pain, the abandonment, the fear, all the things that I've been carrying that I can't handle, I'm going to bring them to you and place them at this altar. If that's you, I want you to step out and come and just bring them to this altar right now. Just come on up here. Just come up here and stand right up here at the front. Come on, bring it to Jesus. Don't care it anymore. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you don't want to walk by yourself, grab somebody by hand and say, come on. Just bring it to Jesus. Come on, just give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus.
we've laid these burdens down. We've given them to you. We, we see in your word that we know from what we believe you picked up our sorrows. You picked up our iniquities. You carried our infirmities. The Lord, God above, laid on your shoulders the iniquities of us all, the burdens of us all. And then you gave us promises in your word that if we would cast them upon you, you would take them. So Lord, today we do just that. We give those concerns, these giants, these mountains that seem to be paralyzing our faith. We give them to you. We yoke ourselves to you, Lord Jesus. We connect ourselves. We link ourselves to you. We connect ourselves to you. And for anybody all over this room that has never connected yourself to Christ, that has never surrendered to Christ, you say, what does it mean? Well, I believe he's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking right now saying, let me in. Just let me in. Revelation 3.20 says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's standing at the door of your heart today, knocking, saying, let me in. What does he want to do when he comes in? He wants to come in and be the Lord of your life. That means you surrender to him. He's in charge, not you. Jesus is in charge. And we're just saying, you'll never let me down. You'll never let me down. You'll never let me down. God, you're good. You're good. You're good. He's never let us down. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He wants to come into your heart. Wash away all your sin. Be the Lord of your life. And if you say, Jesus, come into my heart. Wash away my sin. Be my Lord today. He will do just that. New life will begin in you today. And the first step you take out of this room today will be a step towards abundant life and eternal life. It begins being connected to Christ. So Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. Again, afresh and anew, we surrender ourselves to you. We love you today, Lord, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said amen. Come on, give him some praise, will you? Now listen, as you remain standing, listen to me just for a moment. I know, I know it's, it's easier to bring our burdens and give them to Jesus. It's easier to do that than to not pick them back up after we walk away from here. Because we become accustomed and conditioned to certain things. Even bad habits, we get accustomed to those things. I mean, so, you know, some perfect examples that everybody can relate to is the way we eat. You know, we say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut out sugar. That's just hard. I'm not going to eat bread. That's hard. Who wants to not eat bread? But if you want to make changes in your lifestyle, you got to make some changes in your lifestyle. And you lay down some habits, whether it's smoking or drinking or something. You lay down some, it's it's. If you've been doing it for a long time, it's hard to lay it down. So when it comes to these kind of burdens, it's the same process. You lay it down. Well, the natural tendency, as soon as the, hab the habitual kicks back in, you'll want to go right back to picking it back up and picking up that offense and picking up that hurt, and picking up that habit and picking up that shame and picking up that guilt. You got to say, no, I'm not picking it back up. I left it at that altar. Sunday morning right here at this church. And I'm not picking it back up. I'm going to live differently. You got to make a conscious choice to keep winning this battle every single day. Amen? And you can. Keep giving it to Jesus. Every morning, say, Jesus, I'm giving you my burdens today. You handle them. I can handle them. They're yours. Give them to him every day. Amen. Hey, listen, just before I bless you out of here, I want to remind our guests, don't forget to stop by the guest reception. Go straight up the stairs or up the elevator, right by the coffee shop, and there's a room right there. There'll be people that'll usher you right in there, get some refreshments, a little snack before you go eat lunch, and uh, we'd love a chance to meet you. And thanks so much for being here. You guys are amazing. Hope you have a great Labor Day. If you have the day off, enjoy it. Be safe. 
We'll see you back next Sunday. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and give you great, great peace. Have a blessed week, everybody.